Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to talk about modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. Let us first talk about non-modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable cardiovascular disease risk factors are those that cannot be changed. These include family history, age, male gender and low socioeconomic status. Let's first talk about family history. If a person's first-degree relative developed cardiovascular disease at what may be considered a relatively young age, then family genetics is a risk factor. What is the meaning of relatively young? Relatively young means if the person's father or brother developed cardiovascular disease before the age of 55, or their mother or sister developed it before the age of 65. The next is age. Usually, older people are at greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease because of the fact the blood vessels lose the elasticity with increasing age. When the elasticity is reduced or lost, blood pressure builds up, contributing to cardiovascular diseases. The third is ethnicity. Statistics suggest that people of South Asian, African or Caribbean descent have a greater risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Fourth is gender. Usually male are more vulnerable than females. But you must remember that women tend to develop cardiovascular disease at an older age particularly after menopause. Why is that? It is because after menopause, the protective female hormones especially estrogen drops. When this happens, the protection is lost and as a result female are more vulnerable after menopause. The last non-modifiable factor is low socioeconomic status. People of lower socioeconomic status are seen to be at a greater risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, let us go through the modifiable cardiovascular disease risk factors. A doctor must be able to identify the modifiable risk factors and suggest the treatment appropriately because these risk factors are treatable by altering behavior habits. The biggest culprit is smoking. Smoking cigarettes contains various noxious substances that narrow, harden and damage arterial endothelial cells that make up the blood vessels. What is the treatment? Just stop smoking. There are many support groups as well as quit smoking clinics. Go there and get help. The second biggest culprit is high levels of low-density lipoprotein LDL cholesterol, also known as bad cholesterol. High levels of LDL cholesterol are often caused by factors such as an unhealthy diet, smoking, physical inactivity, high alcohol intake and liver and kidney disease. When too much LDL cholesterol is present, it can cause fatty substances to build up in the artery walls and lead to complications. What is the treatment? To reduce LDL cholesterol levels, you can eat a balanced diet, undertake regular exercise and quit smoking. However, those with extremely high levels of LDL cholesterol may be prescribed medication to lower them, most often statins. The next is hypertension. Hypertension is also known as high blood pressure. Normally, as the vessels are elastic, there is minimum pressure because the elasticity can absorb most of the pressure created by blood. When the blood vessels lose the elasticity, blood which is traveling inside the vessel, will create high pressure. High blood pressure is often linked to being overweight, physical inactivity, a high intake of salt or alcohol or a family history of the disorder, but in some cases may have no apparent cause known as primary hypertension. What is the treatment? Lifestyle changes may help to reduce high blood pressure, and, in severe cases, medication may be prescribed. I will do a separate video regarding hypertension. The next culprit is diabetes. Diabetes means high glucose level in the blood. High glucose levels can damage the artery walls and make the buildup of fatty deposits called as atheroma more likely. If these fatty deposits occur in the coronary arteries, they can lead to possible coronary heart disease. Diabetes is a very large chapter in medicine and so I will cover it in the upcoming video. Usually, when a person has diabetes, the treatment is a challenge because there are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 2 diabetes can be treated by lifestyle modifications, diet and exercise. 
The next is physical inactivity. Not exercising regularly increases a person's chances of being overweight, of having high blood pressure and of developing other conditions that make cardiovascular disease more likely. The treatment for physical inactivity is just go out and exercise. Experts recommend that adults do at least 150 minutes of moderate to high-intensity exercise per week. If this is not possible, any amount of physical activity is always preferable to none at all. Closely linked to physical inactivity is being overweight or also known as obesity. Obesity means having a body mass index, BMI, outside the normal range. The modifiable cause of being overweight is lack of exercise and unhealthy diet. So, change your diet and exercise more. The last is unhealthy diet. Unhealthy diet means diet high in sugars, saturated and trans fats, low-fiber foods and high-sugar drinks. Kill this culprit by taking a balanced diet which is made up of plenty of fruits and vegetables, complex carbohydrates, protein and excess fats, salts and sugars avoided. Alcohol should also be consumed in moderation or not at all. These are some questions that can test your remembrance of the topic. Pause this video and try to answer them. That's all guys regarding modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. If you find value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any biology topics that need discussion, send them via the Google form that I have linked below. Thank you, and see you in the next video.